14 today. Um, so we get to the, the peak of the Bhagavad Gita is chapter 15. So we'll start that next week. Okay, so verse 20. Gunanetan Atitya Trin. Gunanetan Atitya Trin. Dehi Deha Samud Pavan. Dehi Deha Samud Pavan. Janma Mitru Jara Dukher. Janma Mitru Jara Dukher. Vimukto Amrita Mashnate. Vimukto Amrita Mashnate. Shri Krishna tells Arjun, when the embodied soul rises above these three modes that spring from the body, it is freed from birth, death, old age and pain and attains life eternal. So the word Dehi is used, meaning the Purush, the individual soul that is embodied. When the embodied soul rises above these three modes that spring from the body, it is freed from birth, death old age and pain and attains life eternal, attains immortality and attains the supreme bliss. This is one who has risen above the three modes. The three modes spring from the body. The word atitya is used and Shankaracharya says this means that the embodied soul transcends the three modes and goes beyond them. Therefore he has passed through them. One can only chant it, then something if they've passed through it. Therefore, such an embodied soul has gone through them. He has not left them and run away. This is because it's not possible to run away from them. You can imagine that you're far away from them, but in reality, you can't go far away from them. One just has to reach a state of maturity. That's what Atitya is. A young child enjoys going to the seaside and making sandcastles. Now, if you keep that child in the house and say that the child is forbidden from going to the beach, then this child has never made a sandcastle. Therefore, can you say that the child has become a good boy? The child has a lot of wishes with the child which has been kept inside the house. And the second way is if you take the child to the seaside every Sunday for 10 years, 12 years or 15 years, then one day the mother tells the child to come to the seaside to make a sandcastle and the child says, Mother, I'm 15 years old now. Are you telling me to make a sandcastle now? This is what Atitya is. There was one stage where he was enjoying it and now he doesn't enjoy it anymore. This is Atitya. The bliss of reaching the state of Atitya is in each and every stage of life and has a satisfaction to it. Bhut Nacho Gopal, the boy has done enough dancing. There is an understanding in this, there is a maturity in this. Madhusudan Saraswatiji says that this is when during the time of one's life through spirituality, he becomes immune to the three modes of nature. Or this is when one understands the myth of the three modes of nature, be they sattva, goodness, rajas, passion and tamas, donas, that are the form of activity of prakriti nature. This is what Atitya is. One experiences that all three modes of nature are myth. This is also Atitya. One leaves all three modes of nature, even the third mode of nature. Kantakam, kantake, neva, yena, tya, sitan, tyaja. This is just like when we're walking down the road and a thorn gets stuck in our foot. We start screaming and sit down. Now, we have to take out the thorn, and when we go to take it out, then it breaks and a sharp part of the thorn has gone inside our foot. Now what will we do? We pick up another thorn lying around where we're seated and use that second thorn to pull out the first thorn from our foot. Then we throw both of these thorns away. The thorn that is stuck inside gets thrown out, but we do not use the second thorn that helped us as a souvenir. We do not keep it and say that this is a thorn with which I've removed another thorn from my foot. No, we even have to throw that thorn away. Therefore we have picked up this thorn. The first thorn got stuck in our foot and we did not have a choice about it. But what have we done with the second thorn? We picked it up through our efforts and we chose it. We used it and we discarded it. In the same way, the three modes have come in the mode of sattva, goodness, rajas, passion and tamas, stoneness, and have touched us. I said earlier that if a person goes from an animal um, to a human body, then a part of the mode of tamas, stoneness has remained inside them. This is fine and the thorn has come. But then, 
what do we do? We find a thorn in the mode of sattva, goodness, and take up the thorns of the mode of rajas, passion, and tamas, donas, and even leave the thorn of the mode of sattva, goodness. Now one can go ahead in their path. This is because if they hold on to the first thorn, then their development will be hampered. One has to leave all three of the modes of nature. Shri Swami Ramakrishna Parahams has given a very beautiful example in order to explain one thing about how one can become gunati beyond the three modes of nature. Swami Ramakrishna Parahams says that a prince was walking through the jungle. He was alone, he was a prince, and so it was his nature to wear jewelry and adornments all over his body. Suddenly, three thieves came and robbed the prince. The prince lost everything. One of the thieves brought out his sword and said that they should try to kill the prince. The second thief told him to leave it because they had already got so many things out of him. The second thief said that instead of this, they should tie him up with a rope. Therefore, the second thief tied up with a rope and all three of them ran away. The poor prince had been tied up alone in the jungle. Some time passed and after a while, the third thief came and untied the prince. He told him to come with him because he would show the prince the way back home. The third thief um, showed the prince uh, and told the prince if he wanted to go to the king, and the prince said, yes, the king was my father and I want to go to him. The third thief said that he would show him the way. On the road, as the palace came into view, the third thief dropped the prince at the beginning of the highway and told him that this will lead to his father's house, the palace. The prince got very happy with the third thief, and it was very natural that the prince saw the third thief as a good person. He told him that the first robber tried to kill me, the second robber tied me up, but you untied me, showed me the way out of the jungle, and brought me to my father's place. You're such a good person. You come with me, and I'll introduce you to my father. My father will be very happy to meet you. The thief said no, because no matter if you untied him from bondages, has taken him out of jungle and onto the right path home, and has done everything including showing him the way to his father, but in the end, he is still a thief. And therefore he cannot go because then he would get a punishment. The thief said he will show him the way to the king, but the, but the prince would have to go along, alone. The meaning of all of this is very beautiful. Swami Ramakrishna says that each and every being is a prince who represents the individual soul. This is because we are children of the king and the whole universe who is the supreme soul. We are therefore princes. And because we are princes, we have so much wealth. We have been born in hu as human beings and therefore we have wealth. If we do not realize, then it's a different thing, but God has given birth to us and has sent us such beautiful things such as gnan, wisdom, the mind, the intellect, and so many things. We have taken all of these things and have come. When we come into birth and collect everything, then all of this has already been determined. We are so wealthy. Just value the price of one eye and the value the price of blood. Can you do it? Value the mind inside the body and value the intellect. You cannot do it. All of this is priceless. We are princes because we are of God. We are descendants of immortality. Whether we know it or not, it is because we are of God that we have so many possessions. You, me and everyone else is walking in this jungle of existence on the path of life. The three thieves that are sattva, goodness, rajas, passion and tamas, donus, come and rob us. They run into us and steal all our energies. A person has an intellect and it is used in a mode of rajas, passion. They take our energy. If a person has happiness or peace, then this is used up in the mode of tamas, stoneness. This is what is happening. All of these get stolen. Then the third thing that is there, the mode of tamas, stoneness, is a first thief that tries to finish us off and to kill us. The mode of tamas, stoneness is destructive and it destroys us, nashati. The mode of rajas, passion, is a second thief that says we have already robbed him, so why should we kill him? Rather than that, we should tie him up. The mode of rajas, passion, binds one through attachment to action. Garma sangeena dehinam. It keeps pulling us and tries to bind us by moving its hands round and round that we get tied up and cannot get out. The mode of rajas, passion, ties us up. And then all three of these thieves go away. Then something happens and the mode of sattva, goodness, increases. Therefore the mode of sattva, goodness, comes to ask in the form of the third thief. It unties all of our bondages just like the third thief untied the prince. When one goes forward on the path of sattva, goodness, then the mode of rajas, passion, reduces, and the mode of tamas, dhanas, is overpowered a lot. These bondages keep reducing. Not only that, but just like the thief took the prince on the right path, the mode of sattva, goodness, 
takes us on the right path and good qualities keep coming to us as a result of sattva goodness. All of this happens. It shows us the path to reach the Supreme Soul and tells us to walk on a path. It leaves us at the path of spirituality and it is natural that human beings feel that this mode of sattva goodness is very good. We feel that the mode of sattva goodness is good and that we do not want to leave the mode of sattva goodness. We tell the mode of sattva goodness to come with us to God. The mode of sattva goodness says, No brother, if you wish to go to the Supreme Soul, then you must leave me as well. You have to leave the mode of sattva goodness as well. You have to go alone. And this is the state of being alone. And we particularly have to understand this because the nicest people of all and the most understanding people of all are unable to leave the mode of sattva goodness. You should understand this very clearly. The field of ethics is one thing and the field of spirituality is another thing. It is nice to be moral and it's nice to be ethical, but it is not an end in itself. There is still a road ahead. There is still evolution ahead and this is spirituality. Many people say that we have no interest in spirituality, in studying dharmic scriptures or in performing meditation. We are good people and we do not ruin anything of anyone else. We do not lie, we do not steal, we help good people and we help blind people cross the road. We do all of this and we do good charitable activities. All of these activities are good and one should perform them. All of these activities are activities of the mode of sattva goodness because if a person does not perform them, then they will get stuck in the mode of rajas, passion and tamas, dullness. If you go to help and volunteer at the hospital between 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. for one hour every day, then it's very good. And if you do not do this, then you'll just lie on your sofa with your legs at home. Rather than falling into the mode of rajas, passion, it is better that you go there. It is good because instead of the mode of tamas, dullness, you have come into the mode of rajas, passion. And if you have no expectations, you do not want fame, you do not want every fifth person to say that you're a good person, and then therefore this can be called the mode of sattva goodness. But it does not finish there. The reason for this is one. Why do these cause bondages? Because when you perform these activities, then those thoughts of those activities are running in your mind. When you wish to get rid of the poverty of pe poor people, then six hours d as a day during the 24 hours you have in a day, you are only thinking about poverty. You keep thinking about where pu poor people must be sleeping. Does this happen or not? It happens. I will say once again, for folding my hands, that please do not misunderstand me. I am not an opponent of such activities. They are very necessary in society. These activities should take place and I am supporting them. But when we talk about a new level and a different level, then I say that when we are talking about spirituality, then what is this person thinking about? That person is thinking about which footpaths in Mumbai poor people are sleeping in, what they're doing, what these pe poor people like, etc. Some people say that the first set of poor people are very useless because they drink alcohol and take drugs all day. M many say that the second set of poor people are good. Even poor people are given qualities. People say that they would get rid of the poverty of the second set of poor people. They say that last year they helped the first set of poor people and this year they'll help the second set of poor people. What does this mean? It means that two or three hours a day you've been thinking about these subjects. This means that during those two or three hours you have refrained from thinking about, speaking about or contemplating about your own spiritual development. Your mind is occupied in that and there is no liberation there. You get satisfaction, you get the mode of sattva goodness and you get all of this. There is no denying this. You are even performing activities that society needs and this is a very useful thing but there is no spiritual development there. That is why Shri Krishna says here that in the end one even needs to leave the mode of sattva goodness. This is because when we are talking about the pure self then at that time nothing else comes into it. Therefore even the mode of sattva goodness has to be purified and then slowly and slowly one should leave it. Dr. Radhakrishna says to rise above bondage, we must rise above the modes of nature and become trigunatit, beyond the three modes of nature. Then we put on the free and incorruptible nature of the spirit. Now how can we do this? If we have to leave the three modes of nature, then how can we leave them? One way is to go from the mode of tamas, dullness, to the mode of rajas, passion, from the mode of rajas, passion, to the mode of sattva, goodness, and in the end, we should leave the mode of sattva, goodness. This is because the mode of tamas, dullness, is a cage of iron, the mode of rajas, passion, is a cage of silver, and the mode of sattva, goodness, is a cage of gold. 
If the bird wishes to become free to fly in the air outside, then for this bird the cage of gold is still a cage and is still bondage. One needs to be free from even this. And this is the greatness, uniqueness and favour upon us of Indian spiritual wisdom. If you study any other flow of thoughts in the world, then it will seem that everybody is coming to the mode of sattva goodness. They say be good to people, be good to yourself and do good things. All of these things are of the mode of sattva goodness. Everybody stops at moral and ethical values. It is the intelligence of Indian rishis that one even has to leave sattva goodness. This is because even the mode of sattva goodness creates bondages. But how can we leave the mode of sattva goodness? Steps are shown. The mode of tamas donas should be changed to greatness. What was the mode of tamas donas? It was idleness, laziness, negligence, inactivity and sleep. All of this was of the mode of tamas donas and we can change it into or it can become subliminated into tranquility, peace and rest. I said earlier while explaining sleep that we should discriminate between necessary sleep and unnecessary sleep. We should transform the mode of tamas donas into peace. Therefore, the characteristics of the mode of tamas donas, such as inertia, should be transformed. This whole thing will be sublimated. The mode of rajas passion includes actions and activities. The mode of rajas passion can be sublimated into tap, austerity. Whatever activities one performs now will be for tap, austerity. If one does this, then the mode of uh, Tap, austerity will develop and they will rise upwards and the mode of sattva goodness should then be developed. The mode of sattva goodness can be sublimitated into the light of consciousness. Therefore the mode of sattva goodness becomes transformed into light of consciousness. The mode of rajas, passion becomes transformed into tap, austerity and the mode of tamas, donas becomes transformed into peace. When peace, tap, austerity and light happen, then it can be said that the person has become freed from all three modes of nature and a person attains life eternal. Amrutam Ashnute. Madhusudan Saraswati Ji says that such a person attains liberation and attains to the form of God. Shankaracharya Ji says that such a person attains to the feeling of God. Shankaranand Ji says that he attains true wisdom of non attachment. Videha Kevaha. Sridhar Swami says that such a person attains the Brahmanand, the bliss of Brahman. Such a person reaches to the Supreme Soul. Arjun will now ask God a question, that Lord, how can I recognize such a person who has attained this? After hearing this description, Arjun was thinking about whether there can really be people like this. It is the special thing of the Gita that wherever God gives a great description, then Arjun immediately asks a question. Towards the end of the second chapter, Arjun asks God a question. Sita pragnascha ka bhasha samadrishta keshava sita shikim prabhasheta kim asita prajeta kim What is the description of the man who has this firmly founded wisdom, whose being is steadfast in spirit, or keshava, Shri Krishna? How should the man of settled intelligence speak? How should he sit? How should he walk? Shri Krishna was speaking, describing about what a karma yogi a yogi on a path of karmas does, and Arjun asked that if there was really a person like this, then how could he recognize such a person? Arjun is asking a question just like this over here in the 21st verse of the 14th chapter. Arjun asks such a question to God. You will now see this question that Arjun asks and the answer that God gives. Arjun Uvacha. Arjun Uvacha. Arjun Uvacha. Arjun Uvacha.